our story begins with the molding of this magical universe by the three golden goddesses. Back then, in the era of creation, Din, the goddess of power, Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, and Faror, the goddess of courage, created the red earth, gave it the spirit of law, and created life forms who would uphold the law of this world. With their labors complete, the three golden goddesses departed back to the heavens and bestowed a whole new relic the Triforce in the care of goddess Hylia. Under her protection, the land left behind thrived until the dark times and the destructive invasion by the demon king Demise to claim the omnipotent Triforce. As a consequence, the remaining humans were along with the Triforce sent up to the sky, while Hylia and the remaining tribes defeated and ultimately sealed Demise. The price for this victory? The passing of the mortally wounded goddess. Many years passed until Hylia was eventually reincarnated as Zelda, the daughter of the headmaster of the Skyloftian Knight Academy, and had a close bond to one of its students, Link, handing him the sailcloth that the goddess once bestowed to her chosen hero. When the demon lord Girahim kidnapped her, he pulled the goddess sword, departed for the surface, and met the loyal servant of the goddess, the old Sheikah Impa who sent him on a quest to enhance the blade to its fullest potential. After powering the sword with the flames of Faror, Nehru, and Din, the goddess sword was transformed into the Master Sword. Link then passed through the Gate of Time to the ancient past where Zelda blessed him and the Blade of Evil's Bane unleashing its true form. Zelda went into slumber. Link returned to his time and claimed the complete Triforce and Sky Keep bringing the goddess statue back to the surface and crush the imprisoned demise. Nevertheless, Girahim would not let this halt his plans. In a surprise move, he knocked out Link, Groose, and Impa and brought Zelda back to the past to resurrect his fallen master, Demise. Link confronted and defeated Girahim, but failed to prevent the resurrection of the Demon King, forcing the two to a decisive duel. After a suspenseful battle, Demise was destroyed, but in his final breath, he cursed Link and Zelda to an everlasting cycle of reincarnation where his hatred would follow the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero. Demise and Phi were sealed in the Master Sword, which was laid to slumber in the sealed temple, and old Impa passed away upon Link's, Zelda's, and Groose's return to the present. The surface was once again repopulated and became known as Hyrule. But after a long peace, the land once again fell into chaos when mysterious interlopers attempted to seal away the Triforce by invading the Sacred Realm. As a result, Roru, the Sage of Light, constructed the Temple of Time over the ruins of the Sealed Temple and sealed both the Sacred Realm and the Triforce behind the Master Sword in the Temple of Light. Not long after, the bloodline descendant of Hylia, King Gustav, established the Kingdom of Hyrule and erected a castle in the center of the land. This marked the beginning of the Era of Prosperity, which lasted for ages until it met a sudden end with the lengthy Force Era and the legend of the Hero of Men. But the long peace met a brutal end with the second invasion of the evil forces. Luckily, the Picori descended from the sky with the Light Force and a sword to the Hero of Men who sealed the demons in the bound chest. The Picori, or Minish, remained the secret of the royal family, but reappeared a century later when one of their own, the wicked Vati, unleashed the demons from the bound chest in the search of the Light Force, turned the incumbent Zelda into stone, knocked out the new Link, and possessed the descendant of King Gusta, King Daltus, the King of Hyrule. Along with Vati's former Minish master, the cursed Ezlo, Link obtained the Four Elements, prepared the Sacred Four Sword, and faced Vati when he was extracting the Light Force from the Princess's body. In a decisive three-stage battle, Link took down Vati's transfigured and reborn forms and finally his wrath, and it was presumed that the evil Minish had been killed, breaking the curses cast on Princess Zelda, the King, and Ezlo. Using the Mage Cap, Zelda restored the kingdom to its original state. Vati was not killed, but sealed, and eventually broke out of his imprisonment. 
As the Wind Mage, he spread terror to Hyrule by kidnapping maidens, forcing an unknown hero to pull the Four Sword, which split his body into four and gave him the strength to defeat and seal the monstrosity in the sword. This seal remained under close watch until it one day broke when a new Princess Zelda and Link were investigating the sword. Fati kidnapped Zelda and brought her to his palace, causing Link to pull the legendary sword and split into four. He ultimately confronted the monstrous Wind Mage and sealed him back in the Four Sword, leading to ages of continuous peace. The Force Era continued and Hyrule prospered as Hyrule Castle Town was expanded. Sadly, this state would be violently interrupted when a new terrible conflict engulfed Hyrule. It was at these troubled times when the Hyrulean Civil War of countless eras ravaged at its worst that the Hero of Time was brought by his mortally wounded mother to the Lost Woods and Kokiri Forest. Bearing witness to this sight, the wise and old Great Deku Tree took care of the child. He sensed that the infant's destiny was closely tied to that of Hyrule and raised him as a Kokiri, leaving him completely unaware of his Hylian identity. There was a reason for this, however, as a time would arrive for the young Link to rescue Hyrule and its people. Shortly after this incident, the war was finally quelled by the King of Hyrule and likely his Goron and Zora allies. Resulting in the unexplained disappearance of the Sheikah tribe, the unification of the lands under the Kingdom of Hyrule, and finally Ganondorf, the King of the Gerudo Thieves, was forced to swear fealty again to the King of Hyrule. As it soon would turn out, Ganondorf was the reincarnation of the Demon King himself. Humiliated by the Hylians, Ganondorf began in secret to plot against the royal family, seeking the spiritual stones to claim the omnipotent Triforce. On the fateful day his plan was set in motion, the cursed Great Deku Tree summoned the nine-year-old Link and bestowed him the Kokiri Emerald. He told him to embark along with Navi to Hyrule Castle Town to warn Princess Zelda about the looming threat. Link left the Kokiri Forest and headed for Hyrule Castle. Just like Link, the princess had in a dream foreseen Ganondorf's plot to claim the Triforce and conquer the world, but her father, the King of Hyrule, did not believe the prophecy. As a result, she asked Link to obtain the Goron Ruby and the Zora Sapphire. Link collected the spiritual stones and helped out the Gorons and the Zoras, but arrived too late to prevent Ganondorf's attack on Hyrule Castle. In a panic escape organized by Impa, Zelda tossed the Ocarina of Time to the young hero who ran off to the Temple of Time. Unaware of what was about to take place, Link opened the door of time and pulled the legendary Master Sword. Just to be sealed in it. Seeing this, Ganondorf exploited the situation. He invaded the sacred realm, claimed the Triforce of Power, and conquered Hyrule. Seven years passed until the hero awoke in the Chamber of Sages, where the Light Sage Roru and the mysterious Sheik tasked him to break the curse cast by Ganondorf on the five temples and awake the sages within them. Along with his trusty mare, Epona, and guided by Navi and Sheik, Link crossed the land of Hyrule, defeated the monsters lurking in the temples, and awoke the five sages. Saria, Darunia, Ruto, Impa, and Noburu of the Gerudo tribe and returned back to the Temple of Time. There, Sheik revealed her true identity as the Seventh Sage and Keeper of the Triforce of Wisdom, Princess Zelda, and granted the Hero of Time the Light Arrows. Unfortunately, Ganondorf had Link under complete surveillance and sealed the princess the moment after she dropped her disguise, bringing her to his castle. With the assistance of the Six Sages, Link conquered the trials set by Ganondorf and steadily fought his way towards the top of the castle, where the King of Thieves and the imprisoned Zelda waited for the hero's entrance. The massive door opened and accompanied by the sound of organs, the Triforce of Power, Wisdom and Courage resonated. These toys are too much for you. I command you to return them to me." The decisive battle against the King of Thieves for the Triforce and the future of Hyrule commenced. 
when the hero of time confronted and crushed Ganondorf. The king of thieves tried to crush the castle along with the princess and the hero. When this failed, he utilized the Triforce of Power to transform into the demon king Ganon. For a short moment, the Hero of Time was forced to rely on his remaining items and the Vigoron Sword, but was eventually successful in his efforts to bring the Demon King down to his knees. The Seven Sages sealed Ganondorf with the Triforce of Power in the Sacred Realm. He in return cursed them and swore to murder their descendants while the Hero of Time was sent back to the past to relive his childhood. Peace returned to Hyrule in the adult timeline as a new era of prosperity arose. Slowly, the hero's merits faded into legend when Ganon, after several centuries, managed to break the seal set by the Seven Sages. He once again brought havoc on Hyrule. Ganon and his minions crushed the Hyrulean army, and out of options, the Hylians pleaded the gods for help. Faced by the hopeless situation and the missing hero of time, King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule entrusted the fate of his kingdom to the gods. They decided to flood and seal the land at the bottom of a great sea and selected who would be allowed to ascend to the new land. Upon Princess Zelda's and her retainer's departure, the king broke the Triforce of Wisdom in two and handed one of the pieces to her. Hundreds of years after Hyrule had been sealed at the bottom of the great sea, the memory of the ancient kingdom vanished, and Ganondorf found a way up to the surface of the sea and the Forsaken Fortress. From here, the demon thief sent out his minions to kill the Sage of Earth, Laruto, and the Sage of Wind, Fado, to weaken the Master Sword, and ordered the Helmarok King to kidnap young girls in the search of the descendant of Princess Zelda and the Triforce of Wisdom. This treacherous crime led the pirates of the Great Sea to Outset Island, where they knocked their kidnapped captain, Tetra, out of the Helmarok King's clutches. Instead, Errol, the sister of a new Link, was kidnapped. He set out to rescue her and infiltrated the Forsaken Fortress, but was thrown into the sea and rescued by the King of Red Lions. Link set out to Dragon Roost, received the Wind Waker, freed the Dragon Valu from Goma's clutches, and received the Pearl of Din. The hero set out for the Forest Haven, and obtained the Pearl of Faror from the Great Deku Tree, and the Pearl of Nehru from the descendant of Lord Jabu Jabu, Jaboon, and raised the Tower of the Gods. Link was set on a great trial and subsequently granted passage by the goddesses to the sealed Hyrule Castle to pull the Master Sword. With the Blade of Evil's Bane in his hand, he faced Ganondorf at the Forsaken Fortress who was unable to inflict any wounds as the Master Sword had lost its capability to destroy evil. Ganondorf attempted to slice down Link, but was interrupted by Tetra and grabbed her. In that moment, the crest of the Triforce of Power appeared, and the King of Thieves realized that he had found Princess Zelda. The King of Red Lion summoned Link and Tetra to Hyrule Castle and revealed himself as King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule. He united the two fragments of the Triforce of Wisdom to awaken Tetra as Princess Zelda, and tasked Link to awaken the Sages of Earth and Wind and bring them respectively to the Earth and Wind Temple. Offering their prayers, Medley, the Sage of Earth, and Makar, the Sage of Wind, restored the power to repel evil to the Master Sword. Link crossed the vast reaches of the Great Sea and gathered the eight Triforce Shards to reassemble the Triforce of Courage. The gods recognized his valor, the Crest of Courage appeared on his left hand, and the King of Hyrule dubbed Link the Hero of Winds. Link returned to Hyrule Castle just to realize that Princess Zelda had been kidnapped by Ganondorf, forcing them to a final confrontation at the top of Ganon's Tower. The circle was complete. Once again, the Hero and the Demon King stood face to face, but this time Ganondorf did not wait for Link to strike first and took the Triforce of Wisdom and Courage by force. 
and brought the complete Triforce down. Ganondorf stretched his hand to wish for Hyrule's resurrection, but could do little when King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule laid his hand first and wished for the destruction of the troubled land. Wash away this ancient land of Hyrule. Let a ray of hope shine on the future of the world. The last battle of Hyrule was about to take place as the infuriated Ganondorf tried to murder Link and Princess Zelda in a desperate final confrontation. He failed, and Link pierced the Master Sword through his skull, turning the Demon King into stone. Hyrule was destroyed, and King Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule decided to go down with his kingdom. Saying their goodbyes, Link, Tetra, and the pirate crew sailed out to search for a new land, the end of the Great Sea. Several months after their departure from Outset Island, Link, Tetra, and the pirates crossed the waters protected by the Ocean King and came across the mythical ghost ship. Intrigued by it, Tetra boarded the ship just to be kidnapped, while Link was washed off to Merkay Island and rescued by the elder Oceus. He introduced the Hero of Winds to Sela the Fairy, and together they convinced the greedy Captain Linebeck to search for the ghost ship's location with the help of the Phantom Hourglass in the Temple of the Ocean King, and rescue the spirits of power, wisdom, and courage. With the combined power of the spirits, Link forced his way onto the ghost ship and found out that Tetra had been turned into stone after the evil spirit Bellum had drained her life force. Realizing that only Link could save the sea, Oceus revealed his true identity to be that of the Ocean King and asked him to destroy Bellum with the forged phantom sword. The Hero of the Winds headed to the depths of the Temple of the Ocean King and confronted Bellum, crushing the evil spirit and restored Tetra to normal. Nonetheless, Bellum was not done, and after a lengthy chase, Link faced the demon but stood no chance when the great evil being unleashed its true power. Luckily, out of nowhere, Captain Linebeck gathered the courage to face the evil spirit. Bellum possessed the captain, but by doing so, Link and Tetra were finally free to finish off the evil spirit and seal it in the Phantom Sword. With it, the Ocean King finally presented his true form as a whale and sent the three back to the Great Sea and the pirate ship. Witnessing the departing SS Lineback on the horizon, Link, Tetra, and the pirates continued their search for a new land to settle. After lengthy continuous searches, Link, Tetra, and the pirates finally found a new continent which was deemed New Hyrule. The monarchy was restored, and the descendants of Tetra were again named Zelda. Things returned to normal, apart from the spirit tracks stretching across the continent. Over the next generations, an extensive railroad network was developed and a new castle erected. But little did they know that the Tower of Spirits and the Spirit Tracks had a radically different function as a lock and shackle on the Demon King Maladus, who had been sealed upon defeat by the gods in the ancient past. A century passed after the founding of the New Kingdom when the tracks began to vanish. As a result, Link, an engineer, was disguised by the great-great-granddaughter of Tetra, Princess Zelda, and along with Alfonso, headed for the Tower of Spirits to investigate. At the site, the three were confronted by the evil Chancellor Cole and a member of the ancient Locomo tribe, Burn. Together, they intended to utilize Zelda's body as a vessel for the Demon King Maladus. Zelda's spirit was separated from her body, and along with Link, the two were ordered to the Tower of Spirits by the Locomo Sage Angene. Zelda's spirit entered the armor of a phantom. Traveling with the spirit train, Link and Phantom Zelda crossed the land of New Hyrule, restored the barriers to the temples of the land by borrowing the powers of the Locomo Sages through the spirit flute. Link and Zelda returned to the Tower of Spirits and realized that Maladus had been successfully resurrected leading to a suspenseful battle for Zelda's body in the Dark Realm. The demon train was eventually derailed and Maladus's spirit thrown out of Zelda's body. The princess wasted no time and regained her mortal form. Out of options, the Demon King possessed Chancellor Cole and transformed into a menacing beast. 
the decisive battle for new Hyrule commenced, and with the combined power of Zelda, the Sages threw the Spirit Flute and the Locomo Sword, the Demon King was destroyed by Link. Peace returned to the ruined new Hyrule, the Locomo returned to the heavens, and the kingdom once again flourished. Following the victorious final battles against Ganondorf and the Demon King Ganon in the adult era, the Hero of Time was sent back seven years along with the Triforce of Courage to warn Princess Zelda about Ganondorf's planned coup. This would cause the split of the Triforce and time and space itself creating two coexisting parallel Hyrules. Navi, the fairy companion, left and the Hero warned the Princess but after a short while came to the conclusion that the only way to prevent Ganondorf from entering the Sacred Realm would be to entrust the Ocarina of Time to Link and send him on Epona away after teaching him the Song of Time. The hero embarked from Hyrule but was shortly after knocked out and robbed by the Skull Kid who had stolen the powerful and evil Majora's Mask from the Happy Mask salesman in the Lost Woods. After a brief chase, Link finally fell down a tree trunk, was cursed by the Skull Kid, and ended up in the parallel world of Termina. The hero found himself in Clock Town three days prior to the Carnival of Time and quickly learned that the moon was falling. The Skull Kid and Majora were behind it, and the fact that the masks of Termina possess spiritual powers. Not wasting any time, the hero recaptured his ocarina and played the Song of Time to set the time back to the moment of his arrival to Termina. He learned from the Happy Mask salesman that an ancient tribe had in the past used the accursed mask for hexing rituals and that the Skull Kid had been possessed by it. The only way to prevent the apocalypse was to destroy the four masked monsters lurking in the temples of Woodfall, Snowhead, Great Bay, and the Stone Tower and awaken the four guardian deities of the land. Using the ocarina's properties, Link conquered the struggles and time itself but did as well realize that the land and races of Termina were in a miserable state and plagued by deep and tribal tragedies. The inhabitants of Termina were far more enlightened in key areas such as science, politics, and religion compared to the feudal society found in the Kingdom of Hyrule. The people of Clock Town in particular takes great privilege of their technology and research as witnessed by the observatory and the scientists in the Ikana Valley and in term of politics instead of an absolutist royal family they have what can be presumed to be an elected mayor who governs the town. Unlike the Kingdom of Hyrule, the people of Termina embrace the four giants as their gods in a similar way to how the Zoras of Hyrule had their guardian deity Jabu Jabu. These four giants used to live in peace with the inhabitants in a unified Termina. However, as a result of Termina's split into four regions, each of the four giants left Clock Town and took 100 steps towards the new regions. If it hadn't been for the Hero of Time, the deities would never have been released from the monsters placed by Majora. The people of Termina saw themselves as too enlightened to be governed by gods. Instead, they took advantage and pride of other powers such as the magical masks. Without them, and then in particular, the Deku, Zora, and Goron transformation masks, a hero of time would never have passed through the trials of the land. In the end, the hero of time was a just and noble soul who helped people, lost souls and races in need, and for this he was rewarded by Majora with the Fierce Deities Mask, a mask told to contain the combined memories and souls of Termina's inhabitants. With this mask, Link couldn't possibly lose against the demon. The Hero of Time confronted Majora in the final hours and destroyed it, its incarnation, and finally Wrath, saving Termina from the apocalypse and freed the innocent and naive Skull Kid. The spirit inside the mask was gone as the Happy Mask salesman thanked Link for his assistance. With his mission completed, Link and Epona returned to the Lost Woods and continued his search for Navi. 
After some additional journeys, the Hero of Time eventually returned to Hyrule, but what happened to the kingdom while he was absent? One answer to this question can be traced to the ancient sages at Arbiter's Grounds who states that Ganondorf invaded Hyrule. The ruins of the Temple of Time were most likely the subsequent result of Ganondorf's occupation and destruction of Castletown during his invasion. The tide of war eventually turned and ended it with the expulsion of the Gerudo tribe and the botched execution of Ganondorf after the Triforce of Power resonated within him. Instead, the Gerudo thief was banished to the Twilight Realm. The Hero of Time returned to a ruined Hyrule, but as his heroic deeds in both the Adult Era and Termina had to be kept a secret from the public, he was not remembered as a hero or cherished as one by the inhabitants of Hyrule. Instead, he must have decided to prove his worth by following in his family's footsteps and became a respected knight. Obvious traces suggesting this are the golden armor, sword, shield, and helmet the hero's shade wore in the era of twilight. Nevertheless, despite serving as a knight, the hero of time still lamented that he wasn't remembered as a hero and saw it as his mission to secure his legacy through his eventual bloodline descendant. As we all know, the hero of time would eventually return as the hero's shade, a form that might be a consequence of what could only have been a violent death in battle due to his damaged night armor and missing eye in the Twilight Era. With Ganondorf's malice stuck in the Twilight Realm, Hyrule experienced another era of peace which lasted until the Shadow Invasion. Back then, the descendant of the dreadful interlopers, the twisted and rejected Twilight Zant, aided by Ganondorf's malice, overthrew and cursed Midna, the Princess of Twilight, and took the throne by force. Filled with hatred, the self-proclaimed king launched a massive invasion on Hyrule and put an end to the long peace. The soldiers of Hyrule fought courageously against the Shadow Demons, but the prolonged peace and dissolution of the Knight's Order had left the armed forces of Hyrule weakened. There was little they could do until Xant made his entry into the throne room of Hyrule Castle with an ultimatum. Surrender or die, life or death. The Twilight Demons forced Princess Zelda of Hyrule to submission and accept Hyrule to be covered in Twilight. It was at that time that Link from Ordona was knocked out by a group of Bokoblins entered the twilight and upon being transformed into a wolf was thrown into the castle dungeon. There he partnered up with the cursed Midna who brought him to Princess Zelda. Upon this encounter, Link set out to restore light to the provinces of Faron, Elden, and finally Lineru and aid Midna in reassembling the fused shadow. It seemed as everything went according to plan when Link and Midna were attacked and knocked out by Xan. Midna was mortally injured, and the hero once again in wolf form hurried to Hyrule Castle. There, Zelda sacrificed herself to the Twilight Princess and told the hero to draw the Master Sword from its pedestal. With this action, the curse cast on him was dispelled. Together with Midna and with the hidden skills of the hero's shade, he would then reassemble the Mirror of Twilight and reopen the gateways to the past, a stronghold, an ancient civilization in the sky, and finally the Palace of Twilight where the hero defeated Zant. However, in the moment of death, Zant revealed that Ganondorf had been fully resurrected and returned to Hyrule Castle forcing the Hero of Twilight to a decisive confrontation against the King of Thieves who, for a short while, took possession of Zelda's body. The Hero did not hesitate to knock Ganondorf out of the body and then take down Beast Ganon. At this point, Ganondorf returned to his malice form and Midna utilized the Fused Shadow to destroy Ganondorf once and for all. She failed but with the Light Arrows, the Demon King was forced to a last duel against the Hero of Twilight. 
leading to his demise after the Triforce of Power disappeared from his hand. Shortly after, the Mirror of Twilight was shattered by Midna, thus closing the only gateway between Hyrule and the Twilight Realm. Several hundreds of years after Ganondorf's demise, relations between the Gerudo and Hylians normalized, and the Gerudo tribe was given permission to return back to the kingdom. Unfortunately, one day the reincarnation of the King of Darkness, a new Ganondorf was born into the tribe. After stealing the trident from the Forbidden Pyramid and the Dark Mirror from the Temple of Darkness, he sought to resurrect Vati by creating a shadow link to stir chaos. He then went on to seal the Six Maidens and Princess Zelda within crystals. The Shadow Link tricked the new hero to pull the Sacred Four Sword, causing him to split into four and free Vati from his imprisonment. The hero was tasked to rescue the Maidens, open a path to the Realm of Heavens where Vati was finally utterly destroyed, and with Zelda's help confronted and sealed the new Ganon in the Four Sword. Following this act, the blade was returned to its rightful pedestal at the Four Sword Sanctuary. In one outcome, the Hero of Time took on Ganondorf, but failed to strike him down and was destroyed in the confrontation. The triumphant Ganondorf extracted the Triforce of Wisdom from Princess Zelda, the Triforce of Courage from the corpse of the hero, and transformed into the Demon King Mandrag Ganon. Faced by this horrific sight, the Seven Sages, led by the adult Princess Zelda, as a last resort sealed the Demon King with the complete Triforce in the Sacred Realm. The Master Sword was laid to rest in the Temple of Time, waiting for a new hero to pull it in Hyrule's hour of need. Peace returned to Hyrule, but Ganondorf's takeover had exposed the location of the Triforce and greedy individuals found their way into the corrupted realm where they were transformed into monsters and included into Ganon's growing army. The Sacred Realm grew more and more unstable until the incumbent King of Hyrule ordered seven sages to seal the Sacred Realm with the Triforce and sent his knights to guard them. In the moment when the sages were about to seal off the Sacred Realm, demons poured out, marking the outbreak of the imprisoning war. A fierce battle ensued, where the knights took the full brunt of Ganon's minions and fought courageously till the seal was secured. Hyrule lay in ruins, the majority of the knights were dead, most of the races, including the Gorons and Zoras, left, and the bloodline of the Hylians began to wane. Despite decline, the land remained at peace until a sudden disaster struck Hyrule. It was at that time when Aghanim the wizard appeared and quelled the tumultuous. Gaining the soldiers' trust, the wizard tricked and murdered him, cast a spell on the soldiers, began to kidnap and send the descendants of the Seven Sages to the Dark World in an attempt to break the seal set on his master Ganon. The imprisoned Princess Zelda sent out a telepathic plea out to Link and his uncle, the two last survivors of the Knight's Order. Without any further thoughts, Link's uncle grabbed his sword and headed towards Hyrule Castle, but was outnumbered and mortally wounded by the possessed soldiers. In his final breath, he entrusted his sword to Link, who rescued the princess and located the sage, Sahasrala, who tasked him to find the pendants of courage, power, and wisdom, and pull the master sword. Link acquired the pendants, pulled the master sword stored in the decayed Temple of Time in the Lost Woods, took on Aghanim in Hyrule Castle after he sent Princess Zelda to the Dark World. Link was victorious, but Aghanim dragged him into the Dark World. The hero found himself in a twisted underworld and wasted no time freeing the maidens from the temples of the underworld, 
and rescued Princess Zelda, who broke the barrier surrounding Ganon's tower. The hero of legend challenged and defeated Aghanim and faced Ganon in a decisive confrontation. He suppressed the dark magic attacks of the Demon King and finally struck him down with the Master Sword, putting an end to his tyranny over the Dark World. The hero laid his hand on the reclaimed Triforce and wished for the restoration of peace and the fallen to the world, bringing the murdered king and his uncle back to life. The Master Sword was left to rest again, and the Triforce was secured in the care of the royal family as the Dark World slowly faded away. After defeating Ganon, peace once again settled in Hyrule, but Link, the hero of legend, quickly grew restless of the tranquility and set sail to foreign lands to increase his combat skills and find enlightenment. Unfortunately, on his way back to Hyrule, his sailboat ended up in a massive storm, and the mast of it was hit by lightning. Unconscious, Link was washed ashore the island of Koholint, rescued and brought to Mabe Village by a girl named Marin. Upon waking up, Terran, Marin's father, handed Link his missing shield before the hero of legend returned back to the shore to reclaim his sword. From here, Link traversed the mysterious woods, conquered the Tail Cave, collected the first instrument of Sirens, and learned from a mysterious owl that he would need all eight instruments of Sirens to awaken the sleeping Windfish. On his quest to collect these, he befriended a number of odd animal friends, and also brought Marin along to play and sing the ballad of the Windfish to awaken a walrus who was blocking the path. Here, Marin also shared to Link her dream of becoming a seagull to share her songs across the world. Moved, the hero eventually arrived at Southern Face Shrine, where he discovered the inconvenient truth about Koholint Island. To the finder, the Isle of Koholint is but an illusion, human, Monster, sea, sky, a scene on the lid of a sleeper's eye. Awake the dreamer, and Koholint will vanish much like a bubble on a needle. Cast away, you should know the truth. The hero of legend was set under a horrible dilemma as Koholint was nothing but a dream of the windfish, and awakening him would cause the island to vanish. The hero collected the remaining sirens and was then forced by the owl, who turned out to be the windfish's spirit to make an impossible decision. Awakening the windfish at Tal Tal Heights from his nightmares and erase any traces of the dream world. Link had no choice. He one final time played the ballad of the windfish to awaken both the windfish and himself. Luckily, it seems that Marin might have her wish of becoming a seagull fulfilled. Link, the great hero of Hyrule, but destroyer of Koholint Island, was filled with anger and regret, but could do little but once again embark back for his homeland. Sometime after, the twin witches Twin Rova plotted to resurrect Ganon by enlightening the Flame of Destruction stolen by Onox and the Flame of Despair stolen by Varen and offer a sacrifice. Guided by the Triforce in Hyrule Castle, Link, the hero of legend, was teleported to the lands of Holodrum and later Labrina. Wielding the Rod of Seasons, Link connected the essences of nature, located Din, the Oracle of Seasons, and defeated Onox. He was then sent to Labrina to locate Nehru, the Oracle of Sages, and Faror, the Oracle of Secrets. Using the Harp of Ages to travel back and forth in time, Link collected the essences of time and defeated the evil sorceress of Shadows, Varen, who had possessed Nehru in the present and Queen Ambi in the distant past. Nevertheless, Twin Rova succeeded in lighting the flames and kidnapping Princess Zelda, who were prevented from sacrificing her forcing the witches to sacrifice themselves. Since the ceremony was butchered, Ganon returned as a brainless beast and was taken down by the hero of this era. It would take time until a new Link would rise to claim the Master Sword in the land of Hyrule, which experienced another era of peace until Yuga, the sorcerer, who similarly to Aghanim, 
kidnap the descendants of the seven sages interrupted it. However, unlike the wizard, he trapped them inside paintings. Just like the hero of legend, he was tasked to find the remaining pendants after receiving the Pendant of Courage from Princess Zelda. An unknown merchant, Ravio, moved his business into Link's house, and thanks to his magical bracelet, Link was not stuck when Yuga attempted to turn him into a painting, but realized that the bracelet gave him the ability to merge into walls. After obtaining the three pendants of virtue, the hero pulled the Master Sword from the decayed Temple of Time, destroyed the barrier surrounding Hyrule Castle, and beat Yuga, who escaped with the painting of Princess Zelda through a crack in the wall. Link merged into the crack and found himself in the decayed Low Rule, dimension opposite to Hyrule. Using the seven paintings of the sages and the Triforce of Power, Yuga revived Ganon, but was in the last moment stopped by Princess Hilda of Low Rule. The hero set out to free the trapped sages, was gifted the Triforce of Courage, and battled Yuga in the decisive confrontation in Low Rule Castle, just to be betrayed and found out that everything had been staged by Princess Hilda in order to salvage her crumbling kingdom after her predecessors had in the past destroyed the Triforce of Low Rule to avoid conflicts. Princess Hilda extracted the Triforce of Wisdom from Princess Zelda and demanded Link to hand over the Triforce of Courage. When he refused, she sent out Yuga Ganon to destroy him, but was after a short skirmish betrayed by Yuga, who took the Triforce of Wisdom from her. Only Link and the Triforce of Courage stood in the way from Ganon's return and takeover, but in that very moment, Princess Zelda granted Link the Bow of Light. After a long battle between walls, he finally managed to destroy Ganon and Yuga and obtain the complete Triforce after Ravio revealed himself to be the Lorulian counterpart of Link. Low Rule was reaching its end, but instead of wishing for the salvage of Hyrule and the Sacred Realm, Link and Zelda wished for Low Rule's Triforce to be restored, and as a result, saving the grateful Princess Hilda and her kingdom from certain doom. Sometime after restoring peace to Hyrule and Low Rule, the new hero of legend embarked in disguise to the Kingdom of Hytopia. There he was recognized and asked to rescue Princess Styla from the ugly jumpsuit curse cast by Lady Maud. He was sent on this adventure along with two other heroes to confront the vicious lady and free Styla from her curse. The last great hero prior to its decisive decline deserved to be remembered for rescuing worlds, though his final accomplishment was to save the style of Princess Styla in the fashion of her kingdom. The complete Triforce passed down the royal family, securing order and prosperity to the land. This state of matters continued until one of the aging kings saw mistrust in his son. As a result, he split the Triforce and hid away the Triforce of Courage, casting a spell over it. When the king eventually passed away, his son only inherited the Triforce of Power which led him to interrogate his sister, Princess Zelda, but as she refused to confess either about the Triforce of Wisdom or the Triforce of Courage, the confident wizard and secret follower of Ganon cast a sleeping spell on the princess. Full of grief, the young king placed his sleeping sister on an altar in the North Castle, and as the Triforce was split, Hyrule began to crumble, losing more and more of its territory until it was nothing but a shadow of its former self. Hyrule was deserted, but this did not prevent Ganon's followers from resurrecting the bereft of intelligence Demon King, who invaded the land and stole the Triforce of Power. The reigning Princess Zelda feared the worst and split the Triforce of Wisdom into eight pieces and hid them across the temples of the land, and then ordered her nursemaid Impa to find a new hero. Angered by the princess's actions, Ganon captured her and sent his minions after Impa. It is dangerous to go alone. Take this. Luckily, in the moment Impa was surrounded by the Demon King's underlings, Link appeared and saved her, and went on to collect the eight shards of the Triforce of Wisdom hidden in the dungeons of Lesser Hyrule. With the reassembled Triforce of Wisdom, Link penetrated Ganon's stronghold, defeated the Demon King with the Silver Arrow, and rescued Princess Zelda restoring peace to Hyrule with the Triforce of Power and Wisdom back in its rightful hands. 
Following the final destruction of Ganon, Link helped in the reconstruction efforts. Six years passed, and the crest of the Triforce of Courage appeared on his hand and was instructed by the aging Impa to locate the Triforce of Courage after telling him about the Sleeping Princess. But he would need to be careful as Ganon's minions seek Link's blood to resurrect their fallen master. Impa entrusted the hero with six crystals and a scroll with the location of the Triforce of Courage sending him out on one of his toughest adventures yet for the six palaces and the statues located in these. Link conquered these challenges in the Guardian of the Great Temple, the final trial prepared by the King and obtained the Triforce of Courage. Using the combined power of the restored complete Triforce, he awoke Princess Zelda and brought peace to Hyrule. As to Breath of the Wild and its sequel, Masterworks, creating a champion, states that the Kingdom of Hyrule has a long and storied past, where the events of one era may just be ancient myths in another. Since olden times, the land has repeatedly undergone periods of prosperity and decline. So much so that it is unknown whether the legends passed down are actually true or simply myths from a distant past. In other words, the timeline isn't as clear in Breath of the Wild and its sequel. The games take place tens of thousands of years after any prior entry in the series. That will say so long after any other Zelda game that the chronicled history has been blurred, and the events from the previous games are nothing but legends and myths. With this, it's clear that Nintendo and Zelda team refuses to place the two games in any other place than at the end of the Zelda timeline and in many ways rebooted the franchise from a story and gameplay perspective. But what is known from creating a Champion's History section is that Ganondorf, King of the Gerudo, transforms into Dark Beast Ganon and threaten Hyrule. The Princess of Hyrule and the Chosen Hero combine their power to seal Ganon, and in a seemingly endless cycle of darkness and light, Ganon continued to be revived and then sealed away until everyone had enough of this cycle. So to break the cycle, Ganondorf was not killed for a change, but imprisoned in stasis to prevent another reincarnation or revival. Due to this action, for the next 10,000 years, Hyrule prospered like never before, mostly thanks to the Sheikah and their technology. Unfortunately, this time of growth and prosperity had an expiration date, as the imprisoned Ganondorf, through his hatred and malice, managed to slowly create a devastating calamity of himself that would challenge the Order in Hyrule. In the form of a primal beast Calamity Ganon, under the control of Ganondorf, invaded the Kingdom of Hyrule, who was challenged by the incumbent princess, her chosen hero, the pilots of divine beasts, and an army of guardians. These mechanical wonders had been specifically engineered by the highly sophisticated Sheikah tribe to repel an invasion from Ganon. After a long-fought battle to corner the beast, the combined forces set the stage for the final blow inflicted by the hero and sealing by the princess. Ganondorf's first attempt to invade the kingdom through a calamity failed, but over the next 10,000 years, he would hatch another much more bulletproof plan to destroy the kingdom he despised with another more ferocious and targeted calamity and malice. Time passed, and the events of Calamity Ganon's ceiling faded into legend. But as life nearly returned back to normal, the Hylians grew more and more wary of the Sheikah, their warriors, and technology. As a result, the King of Hyrule ordered the Sheikah to give up their technological achievements. The Sheikah, who were loyal to the Hyrulean crown, complied to this order and settled down for a more modest lifestyle in Kakariko Village. The same cannot be said about the warriors who saw this order from the Hylians and subjection by the remaining Sheikah as an act of cowardice and betrayal. After being expelled from their homes by the Hylians, they swore to take vengeance by pleading allegiance to Calamity Ganon and setting up a new order, the Yiga Clan. Thousands of years passed and the memory of the hidden Sheikah guardians and divine beasts slowly faded away. It was first during the reign of King Rom Bosphoramus that the order was given to excavate the Forgotten Guardians and select new champions from the different tribes in preparation for the inevitable invasion. 
but as the Sheikah's wisdom and power were needed more than ever. The Yiga clan sought Princess Zelda's and Link's blood to fulfill their pledge to Calamity Ganon and take revenge on the Hylians and the Sheikah of Kakariko. As Princess of Hyrule, Zelda was, since her birth, destined to play a key role in the foretold Sealing War. However, the young princess's life took a tragic turn when at the age of six, her mother and presumed teacher, the Queen of Hyrule, passed away. This loss had a serious impact on her later struggles and difficulties at unlocking the sealing power that had been gifted across the royal bloodline. The preparations for the inevitable invasion continued for the next ten years, but despite deep devotion, no results could be traced from Zelda's training. The king, fearing the downfall of his kingdom, grew more and more impatient over the fact that his own daughter, despite years of spiritual training, had failed to unleash her sealing power, but other matters were of greater urgency. Since five new champions were to be appointed, Link, the Hylian champion who was chosen by the Master Sword, was delegated as Zelda's personal knight, while Daruk of the Goron, Rivali of the Rito, Mipha of the Zora, and Urbosa of the Gerudo tribes were bound to pilot the Divine Beasts. Over the next few weeks and days, Zelda supervised the preparations of the Divine Beasts and their pilots while continuing her research of the many locked mysterious shrines. After troubling beginnings with Link, Zelda eventually took a liking to the young Hylian champion after he protected her from the Yiga clan and greater waves of monsters. Despite increasing pressure from her father, being turned into a laughingstock by the inhabitants of Hyrule Castle and town, Zelda was still unable to unleash the great power that dwelled within her. After failing in her prayers at the Spring of Power and Courage, on her 17th birthday, Zelda set out for the Spring of Wisdom at Mount Lanayru. It failed, and just as things couldn't get any worse, Ganon struck mercilessly. But even this torment was not sufficient to unleash Zelda's sealing power. As a result, Link and Zelda's effort in the confrontation against Calamity Ganon was for naught. Instead, the worst nightmare turned into reality. Calamity Ganon corrupted and took over the Guardians, and then sent his twisted creations to the Divine Beasts. It was in these skirmishes that Daruk, Rivali, Mipha, and Urbosa lost their lives. The Guardians turned against their masters, and in the subsequent aftermath, the King and the other inhabitants of Hyrule Castle and town perished. Link and Zelda had no other option but to escape. Burdened by the prospect of total failure and the downfall of Hyrule Kingdom, Princess Zelda mourned over her own personal failure which had cost the life of her father, the champions, and most of the Hylians. But there is no time to grieve as Hop resided at Fort Hatino. It was here that the two made their last stand. Surrounded by corrupted guardians, Link refused to run and shielded Zelda but soon one of the Guardians set aim at the gravely wounded Link. Out of desperation and love to Link, Zelda finally managed to conquer her reservations and free her sealing power. With it, the Princess turned the approaching Guardians into scrap, but even this could not prevent Link from collapsing in her arms. As his life was fading away, Zelda noticed that the Master Sword still responded to its master and ordered two approaching Sheikah warriors to bring the corpse of the Hylian Champion to the medical facility at the Resurrection Shrine. But Zelda wasn't done, since after consulting Impa about her decision and returning the Master Sword back to its pedestal in the Great Deku Tree, she finally forced her way into Hyrule Castle and confronted Calamity Ganon. With it, the century-long battle to keep him cowered in the castle and the restoration of Hyrule commenced. Zelda managed to contain the great scourge of Hyrule Castle for a hundred years, but as her powers waned, the time arrived to finally wake Link out of his long slumber at the Shrine of Resurrection. Link was guided by the voice of Zelda to the Sheikah Slate, and from there out to the Great Plateau. After fooling around for a minute or so, Zelda grew impatient in order to raise the Sheikah Tower of the Plateau, activate the Sheikah Shrines of the land, and informed him of the great threat of Calamity Ganon. That time was running out for her and Hyrule. Still uncertain of what to do, Link was soon approached by a paragliding old man who quickly realized that Link was suffering from amnesia. Not willing to waste any time, he told him that in order to get off the plateau, 
He would have to prove himself worthy of the four spirit orbs found within the Sheikah shrines of this elevated area. Link entered, downloaded the four physics and chemistry-defying runes to his Sheikah slate, conquered the trials prepared for him, and received the four spirit orbs from the residing Sheikah monks. With them he set for the decaying Temple of Time. The old man grew tired of hiding his true identity, and at the Temple Tower revealed his identity as King Rome Bosphoramus, the last king of Hyrule. Still in disbelief and confusion, Link listened carefully as the deceased king detailed everything about the Sealing War 10,000 years prior. The Guardians, Divine Beasts, Champions of Hyrule, the defeat 100 years prior, the fall of Hyrule Kingdom, and his daughter Zelda's battle against Calamity Ganon. With Link briefed of his mission to destroy Ganon, save Zelda, and free Hyrule from evil, he was finally sent off the plateau departed for the old Sheikah master Impa at Kakariko village. There he was further briefed of the ancient battle, Calamity Ganon, and told to free the corrupted divine beasts and reclaim the lost memories. Link was then told to head for Hatano Ancient Tech Lab in order to restore the full functionality to the Sheikah slate. With it, the 12 different images depicting locations he had to visit in order to restore his memories and reclaim his past were revealed. Link located at least one of these on his way back to Kakariko and was handed the champion shirt he wore 100 years prior. Fully geared, he was forced to battle disguised Chica traitors from the dishonorable Yiga clan who sought the hero's blood in Ganon's name. Little did they know that Link would soon successfully infiltrate their hideout, defeat Master Koga, and retake the Thunder Helmet. Link headed for the four divine beasts, Varudania at Death Mountain, Varuta near Zora's Domain in the Laneru Province, Va Medo above Brito Village in the Tabantha Province, and Va Naboris in Gerudo Desert. On his way to these massive machines, he learned that all four beasts had gone berserk and endangered Goron City, Zora's Domain, Brito Village, and Gerudo Town. Determined, he joined Yunubo, Sidon, Teba, and Riju, who spoke warmly of the deceased champions and with their help he reclaimed some of the memories from the times he spent with the deceased champions. The brutal but warm encounters with Daruk, the close bond he shared with the gracious Mifa, the rivalry with the cocky Ravali, and the respectful ties with the independent Urbosa. Awakened and fully aware of his mission inside the beasts, the relatives and descendants of the champions aided Link to battle his way to the entrances. The Divine Beasts were sophisticated machines full of mechanical components which could be controlled to solve puzzles and conquer obstacles to reach and activate the different terminals and then the main control unit. With it, Fire Blight, Water Blight, Wind Blight, and Thunder Blight Ganon charged at Link with their dirty battle tactics. But nothing could stop the vengeful Link from destroying the murderers and free the spirits of their champion victims. As a reward for these feats, Link was gifted Daruk's protection, Mipha's grace, Rivali's gale, and Urbosa's fury. With these powers and the relics and weapons of the former champions by his side, a time had come to take down Calamity Ganon. Or so would the champions and Impa believe, but Link and Zelda had a different understanding of these matters. To strengthen his chances of victory and break his way through the many corrupted guardians, Link would first have to reclaim all of the remaining lost memories and conquer enough shrines to pull the Master Sword from the pedestal at Korok Forest. The struggle was long and tough. Luckily on the way, Link met and befriended a number of individuals, including the accordion-playing Rito, Cass, who eventually informed about Princess Zelda's love for him. Grateful for the lesson, Link finally had the power and courage to enter and navigate through the Lost Woods to the Korok Forest, where the Great Deku Tree scolded him before Link finally could pull the restored Master Sword. With the Blade of Evil's Bane in his hand, Link conquered a number of shrines across Hyrule 
and along the way found the locations that made it possible for him to reclaim all of his memories and after a short briefing with Impa, visit the site where he nearly lost his life. Even so, Zelda desired to offer Link a final set of trials. First to unleash the true power of the Master Sword, and then to further test Link's abilities on the Great Plateau, across Hyrule to remember and learn more from the deceased champions, and finally within the fifth and final Divine Beast. Here, Link confronted and mastered the last trial offered by the ancient Shika monk and warrior, Maz Koshia. With it, Kaz played the complete champion's ballad, and Zelda confirmed that the time had arrived for the decisive confrontation. The hour of redemption had arrived as Link made his last preparations and then destroyed the Guardians and Lynels, claimed the Hylian shield, stormed the rest of Hyrule Castle, and finally confronted the scourge of the castle, Calamity Ganon. Zelda dropped her grip of the monstrosity, which threw Link down to the castle laboratory. But as it was about to unleash its fury, the champions and divine beasts came to Link's rescue. Sending a powerful combined beam, they greatly weakened Calamity Ganon and set the stage for Link to unleash the true power of the Master Sword. Calamity Ganon was destroyed, the only thing that remained was to destroy the reincarnating curse that was Dark Beast Ganon. Luckily, though still trapped within Ganon, Princess Zelda managed to hand Link the Bow of Light and inform that Ganon, who was born out of Demise's hatred and malice, had given up on reincarnating to achieve its ultimate form. It was now or never for Hyrule, and with the masterful choreography, Zelda created the gaps and Link pierced them to finally open and destroy the main Eye of Malice. As a consequence, Zelda was freed from her imprisonment and left to conclude the job of sealing or perhaps even annihilating the beast. Peace finally settled as the champions and king finally departed this world, while Link with his fully restored memory and Princess Zelda set out to restore Hyrule to its former or perhaps even greater glory. There was only one obstacle in the way to Hyrule's restoration following its redemption. Ganondorf, who was now exposed and unable to act as it would take another 10,000 years to create a third calamity. Link and Zelda would, however, not let Ganondorf that easily off the hook. After he had destroyed their homes, killed most of their family and friends, and ruined more than a century of Zelda's life. No Zelda of the Era of the Wild was determined to no longer stand back and take matters into her own hands. That included her hair, which was cut short to distance herself from her former life and failures as the Princess of Hyrule. She then assisted Link into Hyrule's depths, abandoned since the distant past, to confront the mummified Ganondorf with the fully powered Blade of Evil's Bane. As their expedition reached the target in sight, Ganondorf broke free of the seal placed in the distant past and confronted Zelda. Perhaps to escape, perhaps to once again fight for the Triforce and abduct another princess. But you know what? That and the dark imminent future of Hyrule is part of the timeline that will be told another day. And that's the complete Legend of Zelda timeline with Link's Awakening Switch. We want to make the Zelda timeline a tradition on this channel that will say that we'll be updating this timeline whenever we get a new big Zelda release. And in this case, Link's Awakening Switch made a ton of sense because of new cutscenes, because of a graphical style that could tell the story that is so great in that game in a much better way than ever before, but also as a way to prepare for Breath of the Wild 2's after the reveal we had at E3. So this is probably the last Zelda timeline, unless we get another remake before Breath of the Wild 2, until, well, Breath of the Wild 2, which probably will shake up things greatly when it comes to what we have in this uh, in this timeline. And of course, as always, a big thank you to Undying Nephilim for the uh, custom animations, Donnie, my great editor who helped greatly remastering this version. We are going to make much more timelines, also not Zelda but also Nintendo, so make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, 
and press that shiny notification bell to not miss any of our upcoming Zelda videos and Nintendo Switch videos that will be coming very, very soon to all of you. And of course, a big thank you to all our patrons that make all of this possible, because Jason Dameron is not free, it costs to bring him every time, and uh, we need support on patreon.com slash commonrealm to make more productions like this one in the near future. And you know what? There are more timelines on the way, sooner than you think. So until the next one, guys, this was Conrad Vanis of the Commonwealth Realm, together with Donnie and Jason Dameron, and we will see you in the next one.